My sisters and brothers, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in truth and in God's spirit. As I pray this prayer of confession, I'm going to pause so that you might repeat the line after me as we pray. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ. where we have failed to love one another as he loves us. Where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips. And then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray. And by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to hear the traditional text for Monday, Thursday. It comes from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. I invite you to hear now God's word. Now, before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, of Simon of, Simon of Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet he and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet... You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set for you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. 
Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When two wet, muddy hands slowly shake me into form, the strong hands of my creator shape me into a wide, open container. I soon take a turn in the hot kiln that transforms me from clay to pottery. And in this conversion, I can feel a call to collect the water wash-off that is the nature of human condition. I am more than a hardened, impervious pot. I am a basin. Over the years, the life of a wash basin experiences the life of community. From hand washing to foot washing, I experience the family breads and foods, and I know the dust from every path in the city. I know the festival rotations, the religious days, and the family days of birth and death that is the cycle of life. These cycles pour into me as joy and sorrow. This Passover, two hands lift me from the shelf and hurriedly transport me to an evening meal. A group, a dozen or so, already are eating. There is one among the group who receives the attention and respect of the others. When he speaks, the others are attentive. There's an unspoken heavy mood among the group. Quite surprisingly, the one whom they respect rose from his place to tie a towel around his waist and assumes the role of servant. The eyes of the others meet in confusion as they see this man pour water into me. This servant leader, takes the foot of the nearest one and washes away the the Jerusalem dirt. I sense the bewilderment of the group, but I see the unpretentiousness of the servant leader who stoops over the dirty water and washes the feet of another. For me, a wash basin, I sense there is more happening than just washing feet. I realize this is a spiritual act for those whom he deeply cares. To wash away the dirt of life from others is transforming. I am an instrument, a vessel that collects and reflects the muddiness of living. I am that retainer that can pour out and empty a muddy soul so that transformation has a clean beginning. I am a basin. In the middle of last year, I was sitting with my mom at Caramont Hospital down in the cancer center, and mom was receiving one of her 12 chemotherapy treatments. It happened to be Nurses Appreciation Week, and so unbeknownst to me, the chaplains have a yearly tradition during that time. They come around to all of the nurses throughout the hospital and offer blessings over their hands. So I had the opportunity to sit alongside of my mom and watch watch as the chaplains took the hands of the nurses who wanted a blessing. They anointed their hands with oil and they offered a blessing over those precious hands. Imagine with me now how true those blessings are being lived out. As those nurses, those caregivers are right on the front lines. They're in the midst of this pandemic. They and other healthcare providers are using their hands to offer healing and wholeness to those that they care for. When Jesus, when Jesus knelt to wash the disciples' feet, he took the role of a servant. He modeled 
He modeled how it is to care for others and the depth to which his love was extended for all people. He invited each of us, each of us into a life of service. He invited us to use our hands, our feet, our hearts, our very lives to serve him in all that we do. Today on this Monday Thursday, we find ourselves in the middle of a time where we're quite accustomed to washing our hands. We do it to keep all of the germs in this climate away from being spread to others. Perhaps you've noticed the CDC guidelines that say you're supposed to wash your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds. That achieves good hand washing. And you're supposed to, according to the CDC, lather all the backs of your hands between your fingers, underneath your nails, scrubbing your hands all over. Some have suggested that when you wash your hands that you could sing happy birthday and that would accomplish about 20 seconds. Those of us in the church have suggested that you use those 20 seconds to say the Lord's Prayer as you lather up and wash your hands. So today on Monday, Thursday, you're invited to find a basin or go to the sink in your house, in your bathroom, in your kitchen and wash your hands. May this hand washing not simply be about ridding your hands of germs. May it not simply be about making your hands clean, but may it be a reminder that your hands, your hands are the very hands that are called to love and serve God and care for others. May it be a reminder that your hands are to be like the hands of Jesus, serving those that you encounter. May God bless your hands, and may you use your hands to offer love, grace, and mercy to all that you encounter. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray today for the hands that are serving us and our communities right now. For those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home. Let us pray for the hands who are caring for persons in medical facilities. Let us pray for our educators who are teaching remotely. Let us pray for those who stock our shelves and check us out at the store. And let us pray for those who are helping and are so very tired. Let us pray for the hands that are hurting in our community right now. 
for those who've lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are separated from their loved ones, for all who feel alone and isolated. Let us pray for the hands of those who are vulnerable, for those who are dying, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort. Let us pray for those who are anxious and afraid. God, would you bless each and every one of these hands and use these hands to offer love, grace, and mercy to others. In the strong name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. After the Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he offered for them a new commandment, a mandate, if you will. That's where the name Monday Thursday comes from, mandatum. Will you hear now this new command? When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified. And God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. May you go in peace to love and serve all that you encounter. Amen. 